everybody. This is Mark Wahlberg from TST Industries. And what we're going to do today is we're going to start talking to you Dude, about... Dude, you're not Mark Wahlberg. Where is this coming from? Come on, you got to get it together. Get the stuff out of your head. So the last time you guys were around and we got to see each other, we were talking about the R3 build and it was a super bike build that was implemented by BART. And um, I gave you all the beginning stages that we were discussing. Um, I showed you engine cases and I showed you crankshafts and we talked about Carrillo rods a little bit. And um, now I thought before I completely assemble this engine, maybe you guys should see where we're at. What I have is an engine with a cylinder head off. I think you all should see it. It's pretty cool. In the last episode, you saw a cylinder head. It was uh, dirty, carboned up, old gasket material on it. Um, go back to that video later if you want and check it out. Now, look what we have. That mess from that old engine became this. So where did we start? Well, there's quite a bit of a process that goes into this. First of all, we went to new valves because we're going to go out and we're going to turn this motor 12,000 RPMs. So we might as well start here. The next thing we did is we decided to do a little porting on it. It's not real heavy porting, but it's like a stage one and a half. You can call it a two. I'll keep it at the one and a half. So if you notice here, around the valve ports, we cleaned all the old slag off the head. Just kind of smooth things out, trying to get the carbon not to stick so much. Clean your combustion in there. So if you look over here, um, we did a three angle valve job, which it's gonna be hard to see on video. But if you work your way down into the port, you'll see how smooth the ports became. If you look in your normal cylinder head that you'd see on your motorcycle, you're gonna see rough casting. I like to call it slag. Um, we cleaned all that off. Why did we clean that off? Well, we're trying to get just a smoother transition of air and fuel to go into that cylinder. We're not really trying to make the holes larger, okay? But we're trying to get everything to match better. So a lot of times you get slag buildup on the end of your intakes and your exhaust ports. Eh, it's kind of in the way. You'd be walking through a cave and having to walk down the side of the cave and get stuck in all the bumps. Well, we don't want that. We want a nice smooth little trail down through there. So if you look here, we did the same thing all the way out to the intake. And then something else we do is we like to match the intake with the gaskets that go on. Okay, we don't want to go too big because everybody always thinks in their head, well, I can go with this big, huge porting job and make all this horsepower. You can go backwards a lot quicker, guys, than you think. So you have to be careful when you get in there and you start doing any kind of port work. You just want to smooth things out. And then if you look at the other side, we matched a few things, okay? And we did that, and I can reach over here, and I can grab a gasket. And I can say, ah, see, we're just trying to match some things up. I'm not gonna get too in detail why the bottom doesn't match, but I'll tell you this. We like it better when the top matches. Some of us call it raising the roof. Now, some of you young guys, you probably raise the roof sometimes at a party. Well, we do it on cylinder heads. So, take a look at that. And you notice the exhaust side is just smoothed out. Okay, obviously one side has valves in it, one doesn't, so you'll be able to see better. But that's our plan. Just trying to make things work more efficiently. Now, you probably also notice this smooth surface right here on the cylinder head. Why did we do this? Well, we want to make sure that the surface is fresh and clean and flat. When you start with some of the gasket thicknesses that we're going to be running, we don't want to take too many chances, so we smooth this head out make it nice and flat, then we have confidence when we're bolting it all together. Okay? By the way, before I go anywhere, you notice everything's clean in this cylinder head, unlike before. That's the way it should be. That's the way the work should be all the time. So keep that in mind. Now, in the cylinder head, there's a couple camshafts that sit in here. Okay? You'll notice they sit right about here. We can line them up for you. Not all motors sit the same with cam shafts, so don't automatically think this is the cam timing for any engine. I just happen to throw these in here in this motor like this. Why do I have a couple of cam shafts laying out? Well, let's talk about that. The first set of cam shafts was the original set. Here's the original cam shaft. Uh oh. By the way, that's not supposed to happen either, unless you make it happen. So you guys at home, don't just take the 
sprocket off the cam. Okay, stop and think about what you're taking off and maybe it's supposed to be on a certain way for a reason. But I can take these off and throw them around and it's no big deal. Why did I go from this camshaft to this camshaft? Well, you notice the lobe here and here. But this camshaft is going to give us a little bit more what we call valve lift. Okay, and valve lift is holding that valve open as the camshaft goes through a little bit longer. Why we want to hold it open longer? Well, I want to pack a little more air and a little more fuel into that nice clean cylinder head because we're going to try to make some horsepower. So here's where we're at. You take this camshaft and this old cam sprocket and you take the bolts out of it. Okay, and then we work our way over to this camshaft and we get these adjustable sprockets over here and we bolt these back together. Now this doesn't just go together in any old lame direction. There's a certain way that this sprocket has to go on this camshaft. Okay, so don't just think you can slap them together. Everything has to be correct. And then look, these move. This is not a normal sprocket on a camshaft. However, this movement, and you guys can all research this while you're home, sitting around, having a beer, maybe having a glass of Pepsi, maybe Coke, maybe, you want to research what is cam degree? Well, that's for another day, but I need these slotted sprockets to change my opening and closing numbers in my cam degrees. So you can research that. But we're going with these bigger cam chests and we're going to try and pack some horsepower in this thing. Now, let's keep going. Hey, remember those engine cases we were talking about? Look what happened. They got put together. Hey, remember that flywheel we were talking about? Look where it goes. There's that flywheel. Now, don't you think I would like to run this flywheel on my street bike? And many of you would probably be like, I gotta have one of those. There's only one problem. There's no magnets in this flywheel now. See all this? Open and empty. This is not a bad thing like this. The only problem is on your street bike, you probably wouldn't get too far out of town. You would not make it your battery would run out of voltage. But we get to put this on here with no magnets and a lot of weight cut off it on a lathe and machining so we have that light flywheel. Do anybody remember why we did that? Rotational mass. Not to mention that big shiny crankshaft you saw in the last video. It's in there. So we lighten the crankshaft, we shave things down, we balance them, and we balance the crankshaft with that light flywheel. So let's see what happens. I don't even know what's gonna happen. I have a pretty good idea though. Now, while you're looking at the engine, you'll notice my cylinder head here, okay? It goes right here. But underneath, you got a set of cylinders. Now, on the cylinders, we have a machine surface. Remember what I was talking about flat surface over here? Now we're talking about a flat surface on the cylinders. It's nice to just do what I like to call a scratch test and make sure the cylinders are gonna be flat. Oh, why are we looking over here? Look at this. See that thing sticking up? In the last episode, we showed you a piston. And you'll notice there's a little bit of a dome sticking out of there. I don't really call that a little. In my mind, that's a lot. Okay, it looks like a motocross piston. But what that piston's gonna do, and that small dome right there, and all those angled valve cuts, that's gonna make us some serious compression over in this combustion chamber right here. So that dome is gonna fit up in this combustion chamber and that's gonna make us a lot tighter compression ratio and a lot more horsepower, we hope. That's the plan. So, here's your engine. We're not doing too bad. Now, clutch basket. You've all seen this clutch basket. Here's what's cool about our clutch basket. We're gonna take this little R3 and uh, my pal Bart decided to call me up and say, hey, I want to put a slipper yo-yo dying clutch in this thing. And I'm like, nah, yeah. all right. I'm like, it's cool, let's do it, it's your bike. So, here we are, slipper yo-yo dying clutch, Yamaha R3, why are we doing this? What is a slipper clutch? Well, here's what we're thinking. When one of these guys, probably Bart or Alex, is riding this thing into a corner, and everybody's going into the corner at the same time. Let's say there's two or three of them all headed for the same spot. Hopefully, this yo-yo dying clutch 
is going to give this motorcycle the ability to have less compression drag in a downshift with the clutch out going into the turn. And what it does is the Yoyodyne clutch actually releases a little bit off the clutch plates and allows this four stroke engine to act like a two stroke in the old days. It's exactly what we're looking for. Less compression resistance on the drivetrain. And that was our plan. Now remember the drivetrain, we had some back cut gears in there. Well, this is gonna finish that off. And that's kind of why we call it a super bike. And don't forget in there, there's some Krillo rods. And I remember uh, my last statement saying, if somebody misses a shift. Well, there's a little bit more to it than missing a shift. Okay, I just kind of put that in there quick. Those Krillo rods are in this motor, okay? Are much larger than this rod. You saw that in the last video. Now the real reason that we're putting those Krillo rods in is um, some of you may have researched this in metals and engineering is rod growth under heat and under reciprocating mass, throwing that rod around in that little circle, okay? Rods grow, metal stretches, things get longer under heat and under reciprocating speed of pressure. So the reason those Krillo rods in there is we're trying to make the stretch of the rod not quite so extravagant. Now extravagant meaning 30 to 40 thousandths, which if you look up 30 or 40 thousandths, that's very minimal. But in a builder's mind, 30 or 40 thousandths is a long darn way. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to make that level much tighter in tolerances, okay? This small rod right here, well, under 12,000 RPMs of reciprocating mass and spinning, that rod's gonna get longer. You don't have a choice. It's metal, it gets hot, and it stretches. And it's going up and down a lot. 12,000 times per minute. Yes, count it out, 12,000 times in one minute. So that Carrillo rod should not stretch so much with the heat and the spin of it. So that means I can run a tighter clearance and tighter tolerances in the top of this engine and I can get away with it. That's one of the reasons that rod is in there. Amongst the piston and all the other heavier duty parts we're putting in here. So if that gives you a little better explanation, I don't think I gave you a real good one the first time, or maybe I just want to tune you viewers in a little more detailed stuff. It'll give you all something to research. All right, guys. Um, I think I pretty much covered everything going on right here that you've seen. And um, I basically got to finish assemble on the top of this motor. We're not too far away from completion. So I got to do some cam degree. And I got to make some decisions on some piston the valve clearances. But other than that, everything's just about ready. So the next time you see this engine, it should be in a motorcycle going around a racetrack and everybody should have big smiles on their faces. So stay tuned.